Welcome to the Maple Run budget presentation. Don't make me laugh like Sorry, that. Sorry, <laughs> My name is Jeff Morrill, and I'm the, uh, the new board chair for Maple Run. As far as I can tell, the only advantage to being the board chair is that you automatically get this budget presentation assigned. Um, these are the members of the board, and I did want to recognize Sally Lindbergh, who couldn't be here tonight, but um, she served for a long time on the BFA and Maple Run board, and she's decided to retire from board service, so we really appreciate all of her work. Okay, tonight. What we're going to do is we're going to get a little update about what's going on at the various schools that make up Maple Run. Um, then we're going to get into information about the budget. And finally, we'll talk about what you see on town meeting day, March 3rd, uh, around the ballot and what you'll be voting on. So Maple Run. Maple Run serves the communities of Fairfield, St. Albans City, St. Albans Town. Um, we have five <coughs> schools. We have our high school, which is BFA St. Albans. Uh, we have the Northwest Tech Center as our tech center, and we have three K-8s, uh, Fairfield Center School, St. Albans Town School, and St. Albans City School. We're also very fortunate to have the Collins Pearly Sports and Fitness Center as our uh, athletic facility, facility and where um, physical edu education takes place. So I'm lucky tonight to, because I have a lot of people here who are going to describe what's going on at each one of our buildings. Um, here's a picture. I believe that a lot of these pictures were taken from our website where you can get more information about Maple Run, which is maplerun.org. And now we're gonna get into the presentations and I think first is Sarah for BFA. Thank you. So my name is Sarah Katam and I am the assistant principal uh, for student learning. So a lot of amazing things have been happening at BFA. And in front of us, we have uh, just a few of those statistics for you. 66% uh, of our students that are taking AP classes are having a score of three or better on their advanced placement exams. That shows that they are qualified. Uh, we have several different areas that are in AP, including science, multiple science classes, and English classes and math classes as well. Um, 25 students chose to attend BFA through Act 129, which is school choice. That shows that students are choosing BFA um, to have their, their high school experience, uh, which is outstanding to know that students from all over the area are saying we want to be uh, BFA students. Um, this year, Jeff Moulton, uh, who's a social studies teacher, was honored at the 39th uh, Annual Vermont Outstanding Teachers Recognition Day, so we are really proud of Jeff, and uh, I, I had the pleasure of being there when he uh, received that award. Um, the Special Olympics of Vermont named uh, Ian Carpenter as Athlete of the Year, and Ian is one of our students, so we're very proud of Ian as well. Um, let's see, we were state softball champions. Uh, the Powder Puff football raised over $27,000. Um, Matilda, which was our musical this year, was a great success, and we had um, performers from all of the MRUSD schools throughout the district. And we had 54 music students attend the 2020 uh, Northwest District Music Festival. So that just gives you a little taste of some of the activities that BFA um, is also involved in. We have a very well-rounded program, both academically and um, in our extracurriculars. Uh, through the arts and through our athletics. So thank you very much. Thank you. Up next, we have the Collins Pearly update, and I think we're going to have Dr. Durst take care of that. So should, Collins. I was going to say, we should say Tim Viennes is the new director of Collins Pearly, but he couldn't be here. So. Yes, Tim couldn't be here. Um, Collins Pearly is truly a gem for us. I think it's the only sports facility uh, like this in the in the whole state. It um, not only is a fitness facility for the uh, and recreation facility for the community. It also houses our PE classes. It has concerts uh, up there. It has sporting events. We uh, it's used all the time for all different things. 
we like having it because, as I said, all our PE classes uh, are up there. And um, most of our hockey games, all of our hockey games, are up there. We have 50 acres of land outside where much of the sporting fields are. So it's, it's perfect for us. Uh, there is more than a half a million users visits a year. So it truly is a second home for many of our students and community. And that's basically it. Um, we're just very, very pleased to have it. And, and uh, I think it's a great, great reason to come to BFA because of, of having the facility. Thank you, Kevin. Fairfield Center School, Park Darrell Dell. Sitting way in the back, so it takes a while. <laughs> I will not apologize for that. <laughs> Good evening, I'm Sean O'Dell, I'm the principal of Fairfield Center School. I'm pleased to present our report. We are very fortunate this year. We are moving out of the 200 year old common school building that the town of Fairfield has allowed us to use for the last, uh, oh gosh, 20 maybe more years. Uh, we are going to be constructing a new music and art wing and that project is underway and we're very excited about that. It's gonna save us a lot of time in moving students to and from class and it's also going to increase safety. We have some great leadership teams going on in our building. We are a small staff and almost all of my faculty are involved in leadership teams, either in literacy, mathematics, social emotional learning, or general school leadership. And that really is a distributive leadership model that I prefer to use. And we are working on our continuous improvement plan, which is required by the state helps us to focus our efforts in improving education for our students. We are fortunate to have another state ambassador for Fuel Up to Play 60. Fuel Up to Play 60 is the National Dairy Council and the NFL. It is a program to improve wellness in schools and for three years in a row, the Vermont State Ambassador has been from Fairfield Center School. So congratulations to Alyssa Boudreau. And finally, we have been giving back to the community. We had a drive for pennies. Uh, it was a penny war started by our friend Tristan Boomhover, and he did that for the Special Olympics and participated in the Penguin Plunge. He did not want to get into the water. His father pushed him. That was the deal, and it was a lot of fun. He laughs about it still, thank goodness. Uh, we also raised cash and uh, donations for the Fairfield Food Shelf. So we are um, entering our building in Fairfield to learn and departing it to serve our community. That's my report, thank you. Excellent, thank you, Sean. St. Almond City School, we have Joan Cavallo. Hi there, I'm Joan Cavallo, the principal at St. Almond City School. Um, this year for us, uh, two big things. One is we got our Healthiest School Award, um, which was a national award looking at all the different things we're doing to make sure that our kids have a really nice balanced um, life with our uh, universal meals and also all of the physical activity and the way that we bring wellness uh, throughout the school. Um, we've also continued with our Rise Vermont Gold status, our farm to school and our stewardship projects all kind of falling under that same umbrella. At the same time we've been celebrating our 50th anniversary so this was the second year of our celebration and this year's eighth grade will be the 50th group of eighth graders that will have left the school. Um, we learned a ton about the role that the arts have played and how the building was built in order to be able to make sure that that kind of a rich education was provided for students. And we're really proud that we're still doing that today. Thank you. <laughs> Angela. St. Albans Town School, Angela Stebbins. Thank you, Jeff. Good evening, I'm Angela Stebbins. I'm the principal at St. Albans Town Educational Center. And on these slides, we have a few highlights of the activities and events going on at our school. The first item is our farm to school <clears throat> program, which we launched last year. We received our grant. We got the program started. It was a huge success. And in that honor, Senator Patrick Leahy requested to hold a press conference at our school in October. It was a very big event, highlighted the importance of the farm to school program in the state of Vermont. So we're very pleased to 
post that. In addition to that is part of our programs related to students' healthy lives. We also received the gold star status through Rise Vermont last year. It was in the fall, so it's really important. Our school is also involved in service to our community. They raise uh, funds for the food shelf, the Humane Society, they donate items. And this photo here shows our eighth graders who in conjunction with the community Operation Happiness uh, coordinated a canned food drive at our school. 600 canned goods went to Operation Happiness in December. And another huge success at our school is our music program. We offer many, many programs through our enrichment, uh, chorus, band, jazz band, through our, about half of our fifth through eighth graders participate in one of the bands in addition to orchestra. So we're very proud of that. The last highlight I <coughs> want to show is we had six of our eighth graders audition for the high school district music festival and they were accepted. Many schools have students that don't even apply ours audition and were accepted. We're very proud of our music program and our students at our school. And we hope you visit anytime you'd like and we appreciate your support. Thank you. Thank you. And now Leanne Wright, Northwest Career and Technical Center. Yes. Hello, I'm Leanne Wright, the director of Northwest Career and Technical Center. We've recently added the word career in our name uh, to communicate exactly what we do and who we are. Um, we offer almost 40 industry-recognized credentials and over 30 college credits in our classes. Industry-recognized credentials are um, nationally recognized. Examples are licensed nursing assistant, OSHA 10, surf safe, and culinary. Um, so every single program offers one of those industry-recognized credentials. Um, we, we are really proud that students explore careers through our work-based learning programs. We have a lot of partnerships in the community, anywhere from the local hospital all the way down to our um, our elementary schools right here in our district. And then we, we work very closely with our middle schools, both at MVU and here within our district. So every eighth grader has the opportunity to come and visit the Northwest Technical Center to see what is available to them when they attend the FA um, and or MVU. So um, there are one period classes that students can take and then there's also our programs that students can take once they attend their, their high school. And then we also uh, cater to our adults in the community. So adults can take advantage of our Career Development Center. And uh, we have VSAC funding that is um, available for adults that qualify for scholarships um, if they're interested in taking courses. Thank you. Thank you. OK, and now we can get into the, the budget part of the presentation. Tonight, we're presenting a proposed budget for FY21 of $60,473,675,000. That gives us a per pupil spending of 16,496, and that's about a 4% increase over last year's per pupil spending. These numbers are important because these are the numbers that you'll see on the, on the ballot when you vote. Uh, the budget process starts, we start collecting information around October, um, so near the beginning of the school year. And then the budget goes through several iterations where administrators adjust um, the requests from the individual schools. At the time that we saw it early in January, we had seen it once before, but um, the administrative team had already cut $700,000 out of the initial proposal. We still weren't comfortable with that amount and presenting it to the community. And so we asked them at that meeting what it would look like to cut an additional $400,000 out. Um, administrators went back and these are some of the items that they chose to cut from the budget in order to get us to that number. Um, there was a lot of hard choices that were made. We really appreciate the work that they did. Um, and at our second meeting in January, we adopted a bu the budget that you see before you with these changes included. Okay, so how the budget is broken down. Um, I think what this chart identifies is that education depends on people. 75% of our budget goes to salary and benefits. That also means that when we have increases in the area of personnel, we really feel it because it's a big part of our budget. For example, this year, we once again had health insurance costs increase 
double digit rates. I believe it was like 11%, 10, 11, um, which totaled about $650,000. So that's something that we don't have any control over, and we had to find room for it in the budget. Uh, this is a more detailed breakdown into different categories about uh, where the budget goes. All but these two bottom lines are what we call regular, regular ed. So those are areas that would um, be under that. Special ed, ed is about, and that's about 70% of the budget, um, same as last year. And special ed is about 25% of the budget, and the Northwest Technical Center is about 5% of the budget. One thing I would point out here is this long-term debt is quite a bit bigger because of the BFA construction project, which has started now, I believe. Um, and the, the first part, which is the connector between the two buildings, should be done by the start <coughs> of the next school year. But because of that, this number, which was around $900,000, has now increased about $420,000 to where you see here, 1.3 million. So we're beginning the payment on that. We have to put that into our budget, but we do think it's, it's a very valuable project. Okay, this is the part that everybody, their eyes glaze over. This is how the property tax is computed. We start out with our budget of 60473675 We subtract local revenues. That's money from tuition, from sending schools. That's grant funds. That's also special ed reimbursement. Um, and that number is about $18 million, And that leaves us with the amount that needs to come out of the state education fund, which is $42,400,000. Our equalized pupil count, which isn't the number of students, but it's the number, it's, it's a count <laughs> because they're weighted, um, is up this year by about 18, and so it's at 2570 and a half. So we divide that into the, the amount of education spending and we get our uh, spending per equalized pupil. We then divide that by a magic number that the legislature sets, which is called the yield, and we figure out what our anticipated tax rate is. I have to emphasize all of this is kind of is estimated because an important part of it is the yield and that doesn't get sent, set by the legislature until usually like May or June. Um, because of, of the Act 46 tax incentive when we merged uh, three years ago, I believe, we are still getting four cents off of our tax rate and that reduces the anticipated tax rate of $1.51 to 1.4757. Okay, clear as mud. <laughs> that tax rate will go away. Um, the next budget year will be two cents and then it'll be gone. Common level of appraisal. So now we have to take that tax rate <laughs> and adjust it based on CLA. So CLA is a way for the state to put all <coughs> properties on a level playing field. So they, they figure out, um, based on properties that are selling in your area, whether your assessed value is high or low. So St. Albans City and Fairfield Town for quite a while now have had CLAs below 100%, which means that their values on the grand list are less than, than market value. And so the state comes up with numbers to adjust the tax rates. St. Albans Town is still over 100%, so that means that their uh, assessed value is higher, and that's going to reduce their tax rate. So if we look at that, we start out with a, a tax rate. If everything was equal of $1.47, and in St. Albans City, that gets raised to $1.66, and in Fairfield, $1.64. In St. Albans Town, that dollar amount is reduced by about a penny to a dollar forty-six, roughly. If we compare that to the tax rate last year, we're looking at roughly a nine cent increase in St. Albans City, an eight cent increase in Fairfield, and a five and a half cent increase in St. Albans Town. Um, I thought this was interesting because this is showing the tax rate before CLA for the last four years and our uh, proposed tax rate. So 
Back here, we have three tax rates between $1.42 and $1.46. That's before we merged. And then in FY18, that was the first year that we merged, we see the tax rate went down. Of course, then at that time, we had a 10 cent um, reduction due to Act 46 as well. Um, and then as the, the tax rate deduction from Act 46 goes away, we see numbers um, <coughs> stay relative, till it, relatively level. Uh, last year was, uh, was a, a really special year. I remember Jim was very proud of it because the tax rate actually went down from the previous year. Um, the important thing here, I think, is to show that between FY17 and now, our tax rate basically is the same as what it was. And so that's including four years of changes where you know you're going to have inflation, you know you're going to have salary increases and, and changes to health insurance, obviously. Um, and so that, that is a pretty good sign. OK, here's dollar values. So if we look at the tax increase and what it would mean to somebody who owns a house valued at $200,000, in Fairfield, that would mean an increase, an annual increase of $161. Uh, in the city, that would be $180. In the town, $111. And now on to um, town meeting day. So the ballot items, uh, Article 1 and Article 2, are always the same. To elect a clerk and to elect a treasurer, except this year, Amanda Forbes is not running for uh, clerk. And I believe, Anna, is, is she the, the town? She's the town clerk. The town clerk. Yeah, so she's running for to be the Maple Run clerk. And um, Amanda is still running to be treasurer. We have three board members who are up for re-election. One of them is Sally that I told you about who's retiring. Um, Jack McCarthy and Al Corey are both running for re-election, and I believe you're both <laughs> unopposed, so you probably do OK. <laughs> and there is somebody running in the town to take Sally's spot. Um, Grant, looks like Grant Henderson will be a new board member because I believe he's running unopposed as well. Article 4. Shall the legal voters of the Maple Run Unified School District authorize the Board of Directors to bar borrow money not in excess of anticipated revenue for the school year? So what this does is it gives us permission to borrow money in order to make payments before we get money from the state, from the state ed fund. Um, we haven't actually used this the last couple of years, but in the past we used to have to use it. It allows us to um, earn interest and avoid late payments. Uh, as it says there, this will not affect your tax bill. Article 5 is our capital improvement fund. Shall the voters of Maple Run Unified School District authorize the Board of Directors to transfer the audited general fund balance of the current fiscal year to a capital reserve fund to be used for capital improvements and operations of the Maple Run Unified School District? So what this is, at, we've had this for a lot of years, and what this means is if we have extra money at the end of the year, we move it into a capital improvement fund, which we then can use for um, improvements in the district. For example, the, at Fairfield Center School, we're spending I don't know, probably uh, approximately $2 million in order to build a new art and music wing um, so they can move out of the, the common school. That's the kind of uses it, it gets put to. This, again, does not affect your tax bill because it's just taking extra money that's left over in the budget and rolling into the, the fund. If there's no extra money, then nothing rolls over. OK, finally, Article 6 is about the budget. Shall the legal voters of Maple Run Unified School District approve the Board of Directors to expend $60,473,675, which is the amount that the board has determined to be necessary for the ensuing fiscal year beginning July 1st, 2020, <clears throat> resulting in estimated education spending of 16,496 per equalized pupil. This projected spending per equalized pupil is 4% higher than spending for the current year. Okay, that's what we just talked about. 
So voting, you can vote early. Um, uh, just reach out to your town clerks to find out uh, what the criteria is. Um, and town meeting day is Tuesday, March 3rd. So Fairfield residents will vote at Fairfield Center School because we do vote by Australian ballot. Um, St. Albans City residents will vote at City Hall and St. Albans Town residents at Collins Pearly Sports. Thank you. Does anybody have any questions? Hi. How does that equalize people rate um, match to comparable districts throughout the state? I don't know, because I haven't heard very many. Um, Kevin, you were with other superintendents. Do you have any idea? Comparable. Yeah, we're about right now. Okay. Anything else? If Nilda was here, she would ask a question. But. Okay. Thank you very much.